hello there welcome to shine Tech's youtube channel and in this video i'm going to go through anatomy multiple choice question on the lungs and the pleura so to start with the question one reads the part of the pleura that covers the media aspect of the lungs is named the dash pleura the part of the pleura that covers the medial aspects of the lungs is named the dash pleura a the costal b cervical c vertebral d mediastinum e diaphragmatic so which part of the pleura covers the media aspect of the lungs so the pleura is named after the wall or the surface it covers so the surface which is near the costal cartilages is called the costal pleura and the the costal surface of the pleura and we have the one which is near the mediastinum it is called the mediastino pleura and we have the one which is near the diaphragm and it is called the diaphragmatic pleura the diaphragmatic surface of the pleura and the one which is uh, near the cervical it is called the cervical surface of the pleura so our question was asking the the surface or the pleura that covers the medial aspect so the medial aspect as we have already seen it is covered by the mediastinal pleura so the correct answer is d we move on to question two question two the right and left pleura come in contact anteriorly at the level of the the right and left pleura come in contact anteriorly at the level of the a first rib b second costal cartilage c sixth costal cartilage d eighth rib and e tenth rib so the correct answer for question two is the second costal cartilage at the second costal cartilage that's where the right and the left pleura come in contact anteriorly so the correct answer is b we move to question three the diaphragmatic pleura is innervated peripherally uh, peripherally by the the diaphragmatic pleura is innervated peripherally by the a vagus nerve b phrenic nerve c first intercostal nerve and d second intercostal nerve e eighth intercostal nerve so the the diaphragmatic pleura mostly the central part of it is innervated by the phrenic nerve this is the diaphragmatic pleura the pleura that is on the surface of the diaphragm so the central part is innervated by the phrenic nerve but the peripheral part this side it is innervated by the corresponding intercostal space we know that in the intercostal spaces there we have the intercostal nerves so the intercostal nerve corresponding to the peripheral part of the diaphragmatic the diaphragmatic pleura innervates the peripheral part of the diaphragmatic pleura so the correct answer here it is intercostal the eighth intercostal nerve why it is the one which is near the peripheral part of the diaphragmatic pleura but the central part of the diaphragmatic pleura is innervated by the splenic nerve but the peripheral part is innervated by the inter by the eighth intercostal nerve so the correct answer is e for question three question four the perieto pleura a is insensitive sensitive to pain b dips into the lung fissures c it is attached adherently to the lung surfaces and d joins the visceral pleura at the hilum of the lung so 
The Pareto Plula is very sensitive to pain. It is very sensitive to pain. So A, it is saying is insensitive to pain. That is incorrect because it is sensitive to pain as it is innervated by the intercostal, mass, uh, intercostal nerves and the phrenic nerve. B, deep into the lung fissures. It doesn't dip into the lung fissures. The, lung, the one which dips into the lung fissures is the visceral plula. Okay. And C is saying is attached adherently to the lung surface. It is not attached adherently to the lung surface. The one which is attached to the lung surface adherently is the visceral plula. So the correct answer is D. It joins the visceral plula at the hila. So when you look at this diagram here, you can see the line. These are the lines. And they have two surfaces. We have the innermost layer, which covers the, the visceral part of the lungs. And it is called the visceral plula, that one which is inside. Then we have this outer one, which is marked in blue. That one is what we call the parieto plula. The parieto plula. Now, when it comes on the hilum, the hilum is simply the entrance of the vessels and even the bronchi there. So, at the hilum there, the parieto plula is joining with that brown layer, which is the visceral layer. So that makes our, our choice D to be correct. The parieto plula joins the visceral plula at the hilla of the line. So the correct answer is D. Question 5. An accidentally inhaled object will mostly likely to be located in the A. Left main bronchus B. Right main bronchus C. Left lower segmental bron bronchial. D. Right upper segmental bronchial. And e. Left inferior segmental bronchial. Okay, so let's compare the right and left bronchus. We see, uh, we see their relations. Okay, so this is the line here, the left and the right. So when you look at the right line, we can see that it is wide and it is vertically but the left line it is it is small okay it is not that wide and it the angle it is somehow somehow the horizontal as compared to this one which is kind of vertical so object accidentally inhaled in here will mostly projected into the right line as compared to the left line why because the right line is wider it is vertical the left line is is not that wide and it is uh, at an horizontal angle as compared to the right line so the correct answer is b the right main bronchus will mostly likely to locate to have inhaled objects okay so the correct answer is b for question five question six which one of the following structures passes posterior to the line roots a the vagus nerve b the phrenic nerve c the pulmonary ligament d the pericardiocophrenic nerve e the, peri the pericardiacal phrenic artery. So which one among these passes posteriorly to the line? So let's see what passes anteriorly and posterior to the left and right line. So this one here is the right line. Okay, so this is the posterior surface of the right line and this is the anterior surface. So you can see that we have uh, uh, the Hilum there, which is that part, which has blood vessels and it also has what we call the bronchus. Then from there, at its posterior part, we can see we have the azygous 
azygous vein, we have the esophagus in brown, and superior, we have the arch of the azygous vein. Then we also have the vagus nerve posterior to it. Anteriorly, we have we have the phrenic phrenic nerve, and we also have the we also have the vena cava there, the superior vena cava. Okay, so that is the right line. So the left line, uh, the left line. Anteriorly, it has the arch of the iota, and posteriorly we have the descending iota, and then we have the phrenic nerve uh, anteriorly, and we also have the vagus nerve posteriorly. So the vagus nerve is passing posteriorly to the lung root. Remember, the lung root is simply the root that uh, supplies blood and also we have the bronchus which supplies air to the lungs okay so that is the root it comprises of the uh, bronchial pulmonary leaf nodes it also has the pulmonary veins and we also have the uh, the bronchus and the blood vessels there that is the lung root so posteriorly we have the iota for the left lung and we have the vagus nerve. So going back to our question, which one of the following structures passes posterior to the lung root? So it is the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve passes posterior to the lung root. The phrenic nerve passes anteriorly. The pulmonary ligament, it is inferior. There is this ligament here. So it is inferior to the lung root. Then from there, the pericardioplenic vein, the pericardioplenic vein, it is this vein here, which supplies the pericardium of the heart. So the pericardium is simply the outer layer that covers the heart itself. So it is supplied by the pericardioplenic vein and the pericardioplenic artery supplies it and it is drained by the pericardioplenic vein. So these guys, they pass anteriorly to the lung root. Okay, so the correct answer is the vagus nerve. Vagus nerve passes posterior to the lung root. So we move to question 7. Question 7. Which one of the following structures passes superior to the lung root. A, the zygous vein, the azygous vein, B, the arch of the iota, C, the pulmonary ligament, D, the internal thoracic artery, E, the pulmonary autonomic plexus. So among this one, which passes superior to the right line? So as we already said, the right line this is the right line and superiorly we have the azygous arch the arch of the azygous vein and we also has of uh, the vagus nerve is passing superior and it goes to the posterior part so on our choices here which one passes superior so it is the azygous vein the azygous vein passes superior to the right lung root. So the correct answer is A. Question 8. The lung roots are located at the level of dash thoracic vertebrae. A. First and second. B. Second and third. C. Fifth and seventh. D. Ninth and eleventh. And E. We have eleventh and twelfth. So the lung roots are located on the fifth to seventh thoracic vertebrae. So the correct answer is C. Question nine. Which one of the following structures runs anterior to the apex of the lung? Which one of the following structures runs anterior to the apex of the lung? A, the subclavian artery, 
B. Sclenus medias muscle. C. The ventral lamus of C1. D. The superior intercostal artery. And E. We have the stellate symp uh, sympathetic ganglion. Okay. So the one which runs anterior to the apex of the line is the subclavian artery. As we can see in this diagram here, this is the thorax wall, and we have these muscles which are on the shoulder there. Those muscles are the scalenus muscle. Uh, it is divided into posterior, media, and anterior. So the media scalene muscle is simply lateral to the to the apex of the line. The, the line is somewhere here. Now the apex, that is the apex of the line, and we have these muscles there laterally. But posteriorly, we have the subclavian artery and the subclavian vein, which is passing on top there, which is uh, anterior. Sorry, so it is passing anterior because the line goes into the cervical region there meaning these vessels are passing anteriorly to the apex of the lines so the correct answer here is the subclavian artery which is a question 10 which one of the following structures leaves an impression on the mediastinal surface of both lines a the esophagus b the arch of of azygus c the arch of the iota d the inferior vena cava e the superior vena cava so the one which leaves an impression on both lines is the esophagus which is a a is the correct answer so thank you so much for watching don't forget to like this video if you like it and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my videos and leave your comment please concerning this video